first step in the 1950s housewife's daily routine is to open the curtains and blinds. Then she must freshen up before she serves breakfast. Pons, cold cream and vanishing cream was a staple on every woman's vanity in the 1950s. They couldn't live without it. For Monday's breakfast, I settled on something a bit more simple, toast and fruit with juice and coffee. I gave James a goodbye kiss before he went to work and then I went and cleaned up the dishes after breakfast. After cleaning the dishes, I got straight into my 1950s exercise routine. The first lot of exercises I followed were by a man called Jack LaLanne, who was a fitness expert who had a show on television in the 1950s. And the second lot of exercises I followed were by the beautiful Debbie Drake, who also had a show on television as well, and she had very different exercises to Jack's. Her exercises were a lot less strenuous and a little more dainty on the wrists and the ankles. After completing my morning exercises, I went ahead and got ready for the day. To make this week as authentic as possible, I went ahead and put on my vintage girdle, stockings, bra, slip, and my vintage dress. My beautiful dress was handmade in the 1950s and has been handed down in my family, which is just lovely. And I'm so lucky to have it. Of course, I had to finish off the look with the lipstick shade Fire and Ice by Revlon, which came about in the 1950s. The first step of the day is to do a 20 minute tidy going through the house and collecting things that don't belong and moving them into the next room and putting them back. I went ahead and fluffed the pillows. And after fluffing the pillows, I put on a load of washing. Along with picking up clutter, light dusting is required. And I mean, I've never dusted this lamp post. I haven't dusted many of the things in the house. So this is a little bit of a first. And let me tell you, it was a little dusty. And I did a little bit of vacuuming. And I ticked off my checklist as I completed my daily chores. 1950s housewives always made their bed. They never left it unmade and messy. Next on the routine was a light tidy of the bathroom, including removing the old towels and bringing in new towels, replacing toilet paper, hand soap, cleaning out the soap dishes. <sighs> this is the first time I've sat down all morning. I feel like I've been going non-stop. And the next thing to do on the list is to meal plan for the upcoming week. Review the menu for the current day and the next. Compare it to what's currently available in the home. Make note of anything that needs to be prepared ahead of time or shopping that needs to be done. So we can't actually go out at the moment. Well, we, we can, but only one person from our household can go out with the coronavirus restrictions because we're on stage four here in Melbourne. So we'll be doing that all online later on today. So I just need to make a list of the things that we need. And yeah, I'll just meal plan and update you with what I do next.
My heels are getting to me. I can feel, I can feel it already. For James's lunch, it was just simple. I reheated leftovers and gave that to him with some beautiful coriander from the garden. Knock, knock, knock. Can you open? And then I went to hang out the washing in my heels. And it was such a beautiful day outside. Pardon me dropping my blanket on the ground. I had no idea when I was hanging out the washing. After completing my morning chores, I made myself a veggie BLT. And by this point in the day, my feet were killing me and I had to take my heels off. And since we'd accumulated more dishes, I had to wash those up before I could start on dinner later on. I gave all the kitchen benches a thorough wiping down and sprayed them with Dettol and cleaned all the crumbs away from near the toaster. As well as wiping the benches, you are also meant to wipe the fridge down and all the inside as well. I'm already feeling pretty worn out from the day so far. It's almost three o'clock and I feel like the day's literally just gotten away from me. Um, it's an hour until I need to start dinner and I'm just about to start mopping the floor at the moment and then after that I still have a bunch of other things to do that are required on the list and I mean this girdle is definitely not really helping. I mean at the beginning of the day I felt really supported wearing it but now I just feel like I just want to take it off and lie down. I emptied all the garbage in the house, took out the compost and put it in our compost bin, watered the plants, and I chose a weekly chore to do in the bedroom, which was cleaning the mirrors and then cleaning the doorknobs, not just in my room, but all through the house. I also decided that the windows were pretty dirty so I'd clean them too. By the late afternoon I realized I needed to stick all my lists up because I just had so many that I was just flipping through so I thought I better blue tack them up so I can see what I need to do. Then after that I set the table for dinner, set out the cards for James and I to play after he gets back from work, prepared dinner which was a baked dinner and then put it all in the oven so it was ready by 6 o'clock. I'm going to go freshen up, put some lipstick on and powder my face um, before dinner's ready and James finishes work. And since my day dress is so festive, I don't need to change. I'm just going to stay in this. If otherwise you were wearing something that was a little plain, not cheery after your husband's come home from his very, very difficult day at work. You definitely need to up your game and put in something very beautiful and very festive. Halfway through eating my dinner, I had to take off my girdle because I actually couldn't fit in any more food. <laughs> after I did the washing up, I was so tired from the day and I just wanted to go to bed, but I had to set the table for breakfast and then I was ready to go to bed. So I had my shower and literally hopped straight into bed. I didn't watch any movies, I didn't do anything. I was so tired. Tuesday's breakfast, we had fresh grapefruit from the garden 
and soft boiled eggs with toast, black coffee and orange juice. I got a little carried away when I put on the record player, even before my exercises. I put on again my 1950s undergarment so I had my girdle underneath my slip, but unfortunately I didn't realize how small the waist of my skirt was and I couldn't fit it over the top of the girdle. So I had to take it off because it does have a very small waist. Um, so I was able to squeeze the skirt on um, with no undergarments. And I used this black and white photograph for hair inspiration. I stripped the bed, cleaned the sheets and dusted the mattress with baking soda, which is a trick that 1950s housewives did to thoroughly clean the mattress. And I spot cleaned the tablecloth because we've been dripping everything on it. Dusted the skirting boards. And boy was there a lot of dust. This was actually pretty fun going around dusting all along. I then gave the bathroom a thorough vacuum before I made James and myself some lunch. After letting the baking soda sit for an hour or so, I came back and vacuumed it all up. And put fresh beautiful white sheets on the bed. After all this standing, walking around, moving, in heels, I started to get a bit of a hobble. My nonna would always tell me to stand a certain way when we had photos taken, and I never understood what she was talking about to stand a certain way, but now I do. <laughs> this is what she meant. That's what she was talking about for photographs, was you place one leg behind like this, and you place the other leg in front, and then you can do it with the other foot like this, It's quarter to four and I am peeling apples at the moment for apple pie and I'm starting this way too late. I should have started this at, at least 2.30 because in 15 minutes I'm meant to be starting dinner. I'm a terrible housewife. <laughs> so I've got 15 minutes to try and get this underway and in the oven so that I can then start the meatloaf. I've got to put the bins out, I need to clean the bathroom. I'm, I'm really not good at this. I really like a time schedule and it's nice following something to roughly go by to get things done, but like, I'm just so bad at it. <laughs> the apples here, I've cut up so far and then I need to make the sauce for it with the sugars and the flour and everything. So let's just hope I can get this in the oven as quick as possible. Because I'm in a hurry, I feel like I'm gonna hack off one of my fingers. Dinner was green beans on Monday and vegetarian meatloaf, which was absolutely delicious, and apple pie for dessert. And there's no better way to finish off the night by coming into the bathroom and dipping deep into the pond's cold cream and putting it all over your face. It's so soothing and it's really nice and cold and refreshing after a long day. And that is the best way to remove your makeup. I'm sure any grandma would tell you that they swore by this stuff. I had a relaxing bath and then I was off to set the breakfast table again for the next day and then finally to bed. another breakfast plated up by yours truly. We had eggs, bacon, veggie bacon, black coffee, orange juice, and I had milk this time, and a grapefruit from the tree. I'm already way, way behind. I need to hang out the washing because that's been finished for a really long time now. It takes me forever to do my eyeliner because I'm so bad at it. I always have to keep erasing it and doing it again without getting eyeliner everywhere. Um, I've got to make James lunch in like 15 minutes and yeah I don't know I'm I'm just always behind schedule and I hope my eyebrows lighten because they're super dark and here's my outfit for today a very simple one a puffy blouse denim skirt and headscarf I decided that I was well overdue for a good dusting of the house I have not ever cleaned the lampshades so that's what I went around doing um, before then going to clean the bathroom. 
I clean the toilet in heels. I clean the shower in heels. I had lunch at two o'clock, which is later than usual because I spent like maybe over an hour in the bathroom cleaning out the shower. It was really gross. And I haven't cleaned the shower in a while and I tend to put stuff like that off. So this week has been really good for that. I'm just doing things instead of just, well, I'll, I'll do that later. I'm, I'm just doing them, which is great. In about 20 minutes, I'm gonna be starting dessert. Tonight's dessert is Grapefruit Alaska, which is half a grapefruit and I think it's whipped cream or something like that in the top and then a maraschino cherry on top. And then dinner is buttered steak with peas and then I'm gonna make a frittata as well since I won't be eating the steak. I just wanted to add that it's so nice setting the table for breakfast the night before because you can get up in the morning and everything is done and, and it's just really nice to sit down to an already laid table and just have to bring whatever you're having for breakfast to the table. Yeah, it, it just really reminds me of my nanny because she'd set the table for dinner each night and then in the morning we would all sit down together and have our breakfast, the little breakfast table. So it's really nice, it's a really nice memory and it's nice memories to make by doing, having a little habit like this, setting the table the night before and then waking up, everything's already done and you just bring your breakfast. I love it. I'm gonna continue this when this week is up. So for the grapefruit Alaskas, I went outside to pick some fresh grapefruits from the ground because I can't reach the tree and prepared those and made the beautiful dairy-free whipped cream for the middle. And then I made the outside, the exterior, which was the meringue. I just put the grapefruit Alaskas in the oven. I'm late again as usual. It's 20 to five, I'm pretty sure. So I'm like 40 minutes late, so. I whipped up some olive stuffed celery for our entree and then got changed into something a little more festive for dinner. Thursday was another simple breakfast with fruit and toast. And since James didn't have work, he joined me for the 1950s exercises. After finishing my exercises, I then got changed for the day. And of course, did my hair and makeup in a 1950s style. After doing that, which takes me way too long, I started James's sandwich for lunch and I just had the usual leftovers since we just have so much food. I arranged the flowers in a vase near the front door to spruce up the house. After distracting myself by dancing, I then got straight into making the curried eggs. Everything's cold, so everything's ready at 5, 5.30, which is amazing. Usually I would be in a major rush to have it finished for six o'clock, but everything's on the table. It's a cold dinner and um, yeah, I'm absolutely loving this. <laughs> this is really easy and nice. And I mean, I've been trying little bits of the meal the whole time that I've been cooking it and it's so good. <laughs> I can't wait. And now I'm gonna make the ambrosia salad. I'm a little bit behind. I should have made that earlier on today, but you know, oh well. After our delicious dessert, we had an evening of relaxation watching a TV show. Friday's breakfast consisted of toast, 
tomato, bacon, black coffee and orange juice again. After breakfast, I put on a face mask and got a call from my mum, so we had a nice long chat as I had told her to call me on the landline since I wasn't using my phone. Since I was chatting for far too long, I was behind schedule again, but I quickly got straight into my exercises. I knew I wanted to wear this cute 50s collared shirt that I had, but it was too big, so I quickly put it on the sewing machine and sewed in some darts. Good morning. I had a situation with the fridge. I was ma I've been making new meals each day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, and dessert. So five meals a day I've been making, and I've just been stocking up the fridge because I haven't been able to, James, and I haven't been able to eat all the leftovers that are in there because I just keep I just keep creating more food and then we just have more leftovers to eat. So it's been a little bit of a situation, but I've sorted it out. I took everything out of the fridge. There was a big container that had the chicken carcass from Monday night's dinner. So I put that on the stove. So I'm making chicken soup for James and I've put a liter of water in there. So hopefully that'll give him like one to two serves, which he'll probably eat for lunch. What I'm learning now is to be a 1950s thrifty wife, you need to be eating your leftovers and not creating more meals each day because it's just, it's kind of a waste. If you don't get all of your leftovers, you end up having to throw them out. Um, I've learned my lesson well. I was speaking to mum this morning on the phone. She was saying, yeah, you've got to use up your leftovers. You know, that's what a 1950s housewife would have done. She would have been really thrifty and economical and saved all of the meals that she made, ate them the next day, and instead of making new ones when you already have leftovers. I've been making new meals each day for the videos so that you can kind of see the diversity of 1950s meals, that it's not just meatloaf, that there's like a vast ar array of options you can eat. I think I'm gonna have to cut back for the end of the week and just focus on eating up what we have because we've got too much. <laughs> and here's the blouse once I've altered the darts at the front paired with my vintage woolen skirt and blue headscarf. And next, I cleaned the toaster. Ooh. Oh dear. Oh my goodness, that's disgusting. And that is just embarrassing. <laughs> the chicken soup turned out perfectly. I just used off cuts of carrot and everything else in it and James really enjoyed it. And I had leftovers for lunch again. And then I sorted out some laundry after that. And before I knew it, it was dinner time again. So I got started on making the cottage pie for dinner. Dinner's almost on the table. And at this point, I can't be bothered to get dressed into something festive. So I really cannot be bothered anymore. Um, the food's gonna be on the table, so you know that's what matters, not my dress. I I just I'm starting to not care at this point. I'm comfy. I don't have my high heels on, and it's great. The cottage pie was delicious. Saturday was another simple breakfast. We ate wheat bix and fruit, coffee and juice. And I received a cute little care package from my mom, which was really lovely. And on the box, she signed Swalk, which means sealed with a loving kiss. I then jumped straight into my exercises, had a morning snack, and then I had to open up my laptop because I had to edit a video. So I kind of broke the week of no internet. But after some editing, I got changed and I was ready for the day. I've just got dinner in the oven. Um, I've literally bludged the entire day of being a housewife. I've been sitting on my laptop, editing my video to upload it for tonight. So it's scheduled for Sunday morning. Yeah, I've been a very bad housewife today. I didn't do any chores besides washing up and cooking. But the tuna casseroles in the oven, and I did a potato bake for myself. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So yeah, negative one point for me for being a lousy, lazy housewife. The tuna noodle casserole turned out great. James really liked it, and my potato bake was so delicious. I 
thoroughly enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed this week of being a housewife because I love cooking. So I mean, I feel like I've got it pretty easy because it is my passion and I really don't mind it. It doesn't feel like a chore. Since it's the last day of the 1950s week, I had to be a little bit extravagant and I made 1950s pancakes. Then I did the boring old washing and then had a little bit of a dance as I dried up. And then I opted out on my exercises this morning because my limbs were so tight. I just had to stretch out because yeah, I was just really uncomfortable. And I just wore a basic shirt dress, 1950s, 1960s style with my girdle underneath and just a simple hairstyle. So I'm gonna be making the smoked salmon mousse on top of the cucumber for James. So I'm gonna try and quickly whip that up now and then bring it into him because he's pretty hungry still. The salmon mousse kind of turned out a little grey, but in the end the taste was nice, James said. And for my ones I made like a mayonnaise, garlic, onion sort of dressing. And that turned out pink because I put red onion in it, which was pretty cool. And then I just piped it onto the cucumbers and the bread. And let me tell you, I don't know what it was about these things, but they tasted so good. The combination of the bread, the sauce, and the cucumber, they were so good. I just couldn't stop eating them. I followed an authentic 1940s, 1950s recipe for Thanksgiving stuffing. At the moment I'm making the stuffing for the chicken tonight. It does say oven toasted bread crumbs, bread cubes, oven toasted bread cubes, but you know, I'm cheating and I'm just gonna toast the bread because I think that's quicker than doing it in the oven. Had a quick lunch, finished the stuffing, stuffed the chicken, and then I had to sew up its butt. This is gonna be one of the weirdest things I'm about to do. Okay, this is literally my sewing needle. This is what I use for like embroidery. Isn't this really weird? This is literally me sewing up the chicken's bum. <laughs> I emptied the compost. And then went out the back to water the garden. Sunday is of course roast dinner night, baked dinner night, and I had extra stuffing so I cooked that on a separate plate, did the potatoes and the greens as usual, and covered it in gravy. I had been wanting to make these little biscuits before dinner but I didn't have enough time so I set aside the ingredients and made them after dinner. These are vintage 1950s yo-yos or melting moments. They turned out lovely, James loved them, I loved them, and they go perfect with tea.
figure, then tell a friend about the Jack Lane Show, this channel daily. Okay. What do you mean you were joking? You're like, oh, we were so dirty one, you know. You're talking. Fake it till you make it.